What's going on, Forward Fam? It's the kid, Big Boss Fable, Forward Fam, and I'm back with a video for you guys, man. Today I have a trending video, trending as of December 15, 2020. What if we nuke the moon? What would happen if we nuke the moon? Me, I'm into all types of like theories, you know, conspiracy, all types of weird stuff, man. You know, uh, so I saw this video and I clicked, hey, add it, add it to the channel, react to it, watch it, put your own commentary, take twist spin to it. Um, should be an interesting segment. So this drop December 15th has over 2 million views and 244,000 likes off of Kyrgyzstan's channel. Kyrgyzstan's in the nutshell. Never heard of dude, but essentially, what would happen if we were to detonate a very powerful nuclear weapon on the moon? Would the explosion knock its orbit towards Earth, causing tidal waves and misery? Could the moon even be destroyed, man? Showering the Earth in a rain of meteor death. Wow. It just makes you wonder. So I'm gonna see, it looks like they have a lot of cool animation involved in this as well. So like I always say, man, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fort Worth Fabian. We're on the road to 10K here, 10K subs. So just do the kid a favor, subscribe, let, help me get to 10,000. Let's keep pushing. And, uh, you know, merchandise is coming soon to the channel, so I'm excited for that. Help me get to 10K, man. Let's hop right into this. What if we nuke the moon? What would happen if we were to detonate a very, very powerful nuclear weapon on the moon? Mm -hmm. Would the explosion knock its orbit towards Earth, causing tidal waves and misery? That'd be Could wild. the moon be destroyed, showering the Earth in a rain of meteoric death? During the Cold War, the moon was a major target for space exploration and, you know, military bases. So, the US Air Force commissioned a serious study into the effects of a nuclear detonation on the surface of the moon. But just quoting stuff is boring, so let's conduct a very important scientific experiment with an imaginary 100 megaton thermonuclear warhead about twice as powerful as the most powerful bomb ever detonated. We'll also place a number of curious astronauts around the moon as observers. Let's push the button and slow down time. Mm -hmm. For the first few milliseconds, nothing much happens outside our weapon. Meanwhile, inside, high explosives send a shockwave to a radioactive metal core, compressing it so much that it reaches criticality and starts a nuclear fission chain reaction. Critical mass. The 100 million degree plasma created in this first stage sets off the second stage with atomic nuclei fusing like they do in the core of a star. Very briefly, our weapon contains one of the hottest places in the universe. And only now, barely 10 milliseconds later, does the rest of the universe find out that anything has happened as suddenly the bomb dissolves and a flaming star of nuclear death is born. So far, so good. But everything that happens now is very different from what we're used to on Earth because of one major difference. There's no atmosphere. As the fireball shines, it releases a flash of X-rays and thermal photons, a wave of silent heat which rushes outwards in all directions. On Earth, this heat would char and burn everything within a 50-kilometer radius at least. But on the Moon, without an atmosphere and oxygen-rich air, there's no burning at all. Also, there are no things to burn. Word. The crunchy topsoil of the Moon is made from silicate rock and metals chewed to dust by eons of meteorite impacts mixed with tiny traces of water. When heated by the explosion, X-rays from the fireball vaporize a thin cloud of rock from the lunar surface, while the unlucky dust that's inside the fireball melts into glass. Any astronauts watching the show... I don't know why this is so damn interesting right now. The animation and just like the color coding to all this, man, it's just got... If you was rolling right now, you would be on one. If you took a hallucinogenic right now, you would be zoning out. That's what I'll tell you right now. <laughs> but uh, it definitely keeps one intrigued, I'll tell you that. But it's crazy. Like, the bomb didn't even need to hit the surface in order to explode. But, like, they're saying it wouldn't even matter. Like, I guess explosion is created, but there's no burning type of feeling or sensation on the moon's surface. I, I don't know, man. I'm not a... A point Dexter here, so I'll get it all, but that's mind blowing, I'll tell you that much. Within about 50 kilometers, can expect to be fried. 
And now we begin to see one of the biggest differences between explosions in space and on. So you still get fried on the surface, but it's not similar as if a bomb went off on the Earth's surface. Because Buddy here just like, sizzled, sizzled to a crisp. Earth. On Earth, the atmosphere fights back against the plasma bubble. Okay. Its expansion is violently stopped within moments by the pressure of the atmosphere. But this is not good news. As the fireball rams the atmosphere, it produces the most destructive part of a nuclear explosion on Earth, the shock wave. Compressed air around the explosion rushes out faster than the speed of sound, shattering buildings and roaring so loud it ruptures organs. But on the moon, there is no shock wave. No atmosphere means nothing to impede the expanding explosion in space. On the moon, the fireball just grows in eerie silence as there's no atmosphere to stop it or to give it a voice. This would be an amazing thing to watch from a safe distance. Unfortunately, there's hardly any safe viewing distance for a nuclear explosion on the moon. Without an atmosphere <laughs> weakening the deadly ionizing radiation that can scramble DNA, anyone close enough to get a good look will be exposed to fatal amounts of radiation. But of course, that's not all. While all of this happens, the explosion hammers against the moon, transferring about a tenth of the explosion energy into seismic waves. So basically, if you nuke the moon, that's a horrible idea, because the explosion would keep expanding, of course, till it annihilates the moon, but would it, like, keep expanding into the galaxy, into a black hole, bro? It would suck everything up. Is that what you're trying to tell me right now, bro? Basically, what I'm getting three minutes and 54 seconds in, it's a stupid-ass idea to nuke the moon. That's what I'm, the understanding I'm getting, clearly. Eve's powering an intense moonquake. The moon is much smaller than the Earth, and our astronauts will feel an inescapable violent shaking no matter where they're standing. If y'all get shot, Comparable I to an earthquake of seven on the Richter scale, this shaking could seriously damage or even level infrastructure we might have built anywhere on the moon. Those who hit on the far nice. side of the moon would have no idea it was an explosion. The quaking would feel like an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid had struck. And it's not over yet. Where our bomb explodes, the ground splatters like water when a rock strikes a pond. As the explosion pushes against the surface, it may excavate as much as 100 million cubic meters of dust and rock, forming a crater a kilometer across while bedrock is pulverized to rubble. Debris is shot into the sky in every direction. Again, without an atmosphere, there's no drag to slow any of it down. Much of the debris scattered never returns to the moon, flying off faster than escape velocity. A flurry of micrometeorites have been cast off to explore the solar system, many of which will rain down on the Earth, though few will be larger than pebbles. Any satellite, astronaut or space station in the way, though, will have a really bad time. Micrometeorites are launched at many speeds and angles. Is that the so basically fuel won't be bigger than a pebble? Is that because basically when you got a meteorite, it's traveling through the galaxy or whatever before it even gets time to break Earth's surface? I think like all the heat and the pressure is just compact and gets small as hell, right? So by the time it even breaks into Earth's surface and it starts heading towards land, it's just getting smaller and smaller. That's what I would think is happening. Because when something breaks off in the atmosphere and it's traveling hella miles, I wouldn't even know, it's thousands of, I don't even think it's like, it's probably millions of miles, who cares? Who even knows? That all that pressure and as fast as it's moving, it's compacting, it's probably just small, making it smaller and smaller. Allowing them to spread all over the surface of the moon. Like bullets, they'll punch through our curious astronauts no matter where they stand. Finally, our explosion comes to an end. Damn. On Earth, the fireball rises like a hot air balloon, forming a sort of stalk. As it reaches up, cooler air is drawn in around it, rounding the top into a mushroom cloud. But on the moon, well, you know by now, no atmosphere, no mushroom. The larger the plasma gets, the cooler it becomes, and the less energy it has to make interesting or terrifying things happen. Within seconds of pulling the trigger, the bubble reddens and fades from view. It would be visible from the Earth like a star flickering to life only to fade out right away. A spark and then nothing. As the cloud of tiny debris reaches far above the surface of the moon, it's illuminated by the sun for a few minutes, giving it an eerie beauty for anyone left to observe the spectacle. Yeah, but would what you about be able to the moon's see that orbit? Or... 
it's basically unchanged. Trying to move the moon with a nuke is like trying to move a truck by blowing on it. Nuclear explosions may be big, but space is bigger. Our mighty explosion just leaves another crater, <laughs> one among millions. Still, That's anyone why, on the after all that, they came to the, to the whole understanding and telling us that, bro, nothing would happen if you try to nuke the moon at all. It's just gonna look like a small little crater. That's crazy, bro. I'm thinking the moon gonna explode or do all this wild stuff, and basically, nothing happened. Moon will continue to not enjoy themselves. The material that ends up raining back to the moon is radioactive, and without any natural processes to wash it away or bury it, the surface of the moon will remain contaminated. Although, fortunately, the worst of the radiation will have decayed to a level comparable to natural levels from cosmic rays in about a year. In conclusion, we can say with confidence that while the moon itself does not care about being nuked, and will barely notice, using the moon as a nuclear test ground kind of ruins it for everyone trying to spend some time there or to build something useful. So maybe we should just not do that. This was our last video of the year 12,020, <laughs> and uh, oh dear, what an interesting and weird year it's been in all the worst ways. But it's finally over. We want to end it by saying thank you. We get to do this channel and work on many exciting things because of you burbs. This year, our German channel reached a million subscribers, we launched our Spanish one, and released our first app. If everything goes right. well, we can finally start our largest new project to date next year, but we know better than to promise too much. All of this works because you support us directly. Thank you so much. We genuinely appreciate it. If you want to help us out too and get something cool in return, to the tune of nuking the moon, we've made a new minimalistic infographic poster about the moon and how incredibly far away it is. Also, there's a baby duck, our cutest plushie yet, a new duck and friends enamel mug, our new ocean explorer notebook, and so much more. All made with uh, love and care. So, shout out to this channel. I know it looks like they're doing a lot, but... um. It just didn't end. I didn't think that that's how it would end. Like, you know, space is crazy. You know, what's going on out there ain't nothing like what's going down here on Earth. But um, let me know your thoughts on that video in the comment section below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fort Worth Fabian. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers, man. Appreciate everybody supporting and rocking with the channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Follow me on social platforms like I just mentioned, man. We're going to have merchandise here on the channel very soon. I got to hit that 10K subscriber mark, but I appreciate you guys rocking with me. With that being said, if you're new to the channel, man, go to my playlist section and get familiarized with all the content I have here on this channel just to give you another reason to support the kid, man. With that being said, God bless. Everybody take it easy. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.